so we're talking about this misophonia thing, which um, we're, we're going to be getting into now. And this was something which I suspected Ruth had for a long time. She didn't realise it. Uh, she just thought she was overly grumpy. <laughs> but um, but even, even to the point of me breathing, you wouldn't like. Well, if you're too close to me and like breathing, if you're giving me a cuddle, which is You mean is just being affectionate? No, no, now you're making fun of it. I'm not I'm making saying, fun of it. I have lovely, to live with it. But if someone's breathing quite heavily near me, I can, I just chew. I think what happens is I just tune in. So there's certain noises, if someone was clicking a pen over there, everything else around me becomes kind of dulled and all or I can I hear is that, yeah. Oh. And then you get this kind of like, and if it's a, even if it's a stranger, sometimes I have to say, sorry, could you stop that, please? And then I blurt it out, and then I'm really well, you embarrassed. You don't say sorry, could you stop that? Not you, to you, I you just... You swear. Yes, you, you do, swear I quite do. a lot. I do, I yes. do. And you become angry, and then it's a stressful situation. It is a stressful situation, and eating is stressful because I can't... I we often... Like we often... Ruth will often... <laughs> Ruth will often make a Sunday breakfast, which she does very, very well, don't you, darling? Thank you very much. And she's so proud of it, she takes a picture of it, you know, mm -hmm. and she puts it on Instagram. And I said, why are you taking a picture of your breakfast for? it looks for? nice. And she does that, and it looks nice, and it's lovely. And then she'll sit down and she'll make me a nice mug of tea with it, whatever, and I'll sit down to enjoy the fruits of her labours, and I'll start to eat the breakfast, and I go to a drink. And Ruth goes... You didn't do it, you didn't slurp then. It's much louder than that normally. Oh, slurps. Now I have to leave the, the table is, sometimes. You, you make the tea too hot. That's why I have to slurp. That's why that is simply why the tea's far too hot. Anyway. No, the point no, the point is, I'm making want to make this point. This is to, my life. To cool. So the So the thing is, Sunday breakfast turns up, it's a massive raw. So I throw the breakfast there. Well, I don't really no, you eat don't. most of it. You no, eat I don't. The breakfast. And and then we storm off and then we don't talk for the rest of the day. Because of your sensitivity. Yes, so we started and looking very, into And I'm this. very um, sensitive yes, to you. Yes, sometimes you are, not all the time. Um, but we started talking about this as a kind of joke, but then it turned into so many of you getting in touch with us and saying, this is a real thing, it's really affecting my life, it's affecting my relationships. So we thought we would look into it a bit more. So we've got clinical psychologists, and Thanks Dr. for all Florian. these calls that are coming in. I just want to reflect the massive response, Doctor, Huge. to everything's coming in here. Saskia, for instance, I cannot watch or listen to anyone eat yoghurt, mousse, porridge, stuff like that. How can you eat yoghurt like noisily? How can it be noisy? You eat yoghurt noisily. OK, so, Doctor, is it... Yes, who's, good morning. Whose fault is it? Is it noisy eaters or is it the perception of the person who's hearing sensitive? Well, so you're going quite to the heart of it already. Um, I think it's a good uh, reflection of, you know, how this may be affecting people, the hearing the, the conversation that you're having at the moment. So, um, I think it's a bit of both. It's probably the honest answer. Um, if uh, you think about the, the sound, the, the, the term that is used, misophonia, really it uh, comes from the Greek. So uh, miso is hate and phonia is sound. So it really means the hate of sound. And this is really characteristic of this condition. It's the emotional response, the anger, frustration, rage that characterizes um, this. And really it is about uh, the, the sounds, generally speaking, that other people make, such as the eating, the chewing, slurping, but it could be also uh, rustling of bags. Yes, rustling crisps, crisps, bags, for crisps example, packets. The That's coming through a lot, actually, from people, crisps. Um, but, um, Dr Florian, is it a recognised condition? We've got, it's got a name, misophonia. Is it medically recognised? No, it does not yet have a medical uh, label to it as such. A medical, like not an audiological, a psychological, or, or neurological label. It's not been recognized as a condition as of yet. However, it does seem to be standing on its own quite a lot. So it's not uh, correlated very much with other recognized conditions. It's not related yeah. to a, a hearing co uh, condition or a psychological condition as such. So it may well be recognized at some point as its own condition. You see, the, the, the doctor used two words there, which a lot of you may identify with, and that those were anger and rage. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about, oh, this is a slight oddity, or this is a slight no. nuisance here. You respond with anger and rage, yeah, and therefore and you of, must be really hurting. It blurts out of you. I remember sitting on a train once, in those days, long ago, um, and somebody, there was a man opposite me, and he had a polystyrene cup, cup of, you know, he'd finished his tea or coffee, and he was reading his paper, and he was twirling this cup, and so I could just hear this... 
in, even though I was on a train, so there's the noise of the train, full carriage, and I could feel this, like, oh, I can't stand this noise, and eventually I went, I'm sorry, could you stop that, please? And I just blurted it out to a complete stranger. He looked at me so like I was mad. So it's actually hurting you, is it? Yeah, yes. Um, and I want to bring Michelle Davies in now, because Michelle, I think, will relate to everything we've been talking about. Michelle, thank you for coming on to do this. Michelle's in, um, in Wales. Um, Michelle, <laughs> you, you will identify with that, this kind of noise, and then and you can feel this anger, because the noise is so irritating to you. What is it with you? When did you first notice it? How does it present itself? Sniffing, I think, is the main trigger. Um, and it's the same for other people in my family as well. So I don't know whether there is a hereditary link or anything like that, but we sniffing is the main one. But the same as you, repetitive sounds, so toe tapping, um, pen clicking. And I remember even in school thinking the same as you, that, that zoning in on a sound. So at the back of the classroom, if somebody was tapping a pen, I couldn't concentrate on my work. That was the only thing that I could focus on would be that yeah. irritating sound. Um, you've got, a, you've got a, a, a young son, a very young son. You must get coughs and colds and sniffles. Um, so how do you cope with being with him if he's sniffing? I'm trying to teach him now. Luckily, the baby like snuffly sounds that they make doesn't have the same effect on me, but as he's now getting older um, and able to use a tissue, I don't know whether the irritation for me is like, why are you choosing to make that disgusting sound when you can go and get a tissue? So I'm trying to teach him now, um, you he, know, we don't sniff. But he's not choosing. Do we, do we, doctor, can Michelle turn this round by actually accepting it's not her son or indeed her long suffering husband that is the problem, <laughs> it is her that is the problem. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I just like to open up this condition a little, con, um, conversation a little bit in that actually this condition um, is maybe not so unusual. If you think about it, uh, probably most people um, have got somebody in their environment or, or friendship group that they find a difficult or a noisy eater. And indeed, when we grow up, generally speaking, our parents tell us to eat with our mouths closed for a reason. So I think the people that we describe as suffering from misophonia are lying on a continuum to maybe perhaps more on the extreme, but but it's probably fair to say that very few people like to listen to the sound of, of other people eating or would consider the sound of other people eating or sniffing as a nice sound. OK. So, what what, a, um, what about... Know... Sorry, yeah. I understand that, because I think a lot of people don't like to sit some, next to someone chomping and slurping. But what about what Michelle and I were just talking about? Repetitive sounds, you know, something can be here, it could be on the other side of the studio, if, if they're up in the gallery somebody's on, the, on their keyboard and I can hear it in my earpiece, I have to ask them to stop, because it means that everything else I can't yes. concentrate on. Yes. I can so you're just talking hear. about the, the heightened attention yeah. of those sounds. Um, and that's obviously very characteristic of people who are suffering from misophonia. Um, they will um, concentrate and, and look at the person making those sounds. So if you have your Sunday morning meal, you'll probably be looking at Eamon's um, movement of you know, raising his cup to his lips. And as you're then uh, sort of excluding all other things that may be going on and maybe not even looking at your own food, that sort of heightens the awareness um, of, of, that, uh, of, the, of the response and, and, and still, uh, yeah, makes the, that anger much stronger. However, I would also like to point out that this isn't something that um, people are sort of making up, if you will. I mean, uh, it tends to be a condition that develops almost without fail around the ages of 11, 12, 13. And we do see that there is uh, some uh, genetic component to this. In fact, it's one of the questions that we often ask our patients um, you know, is there a family member that is suffering uh, from this condition? And about 30% of people will know of a family member, uh, such as a parent or grandparent, that has had the same well, condition. We'll ask, you two. Uh, we'll ask you two. Well, Michelle, you said yes in your family. Who, who in your family? Two of my aunties on my dad's side in particular um, are, are sniffing, but those repetitive sounds as well. Um, one auntie actually can says she can hear eyelashes blinking off of glasses if oh she sat too close. Word, yeah. Wow, that's that is very high. Michelle, could I ask you about your husband? What's your husband's name? His name is James. He right. um, suffers with hay fever, and so we so have a bit of an ongoing sneezes. battle. That's yeah. the worst combination, yeah, but... a hay so, fever sufferer and you that can't bear is, sniffing. Is, is, is he aware that you have a condition? 
Well, no, I don't think he would see it that way. I think much the same as you, he thinks, oh, come on, you know, it's not that bad, especially because with hay fever, yeah. or if, if he had cold, he's uncomfortable. And I think where he would be hoping to get sympathy, the first sort of sign of sniffing, and I just can't cope, I just feel that yeah. rise in my blood pressure if I cannot be around him. Yeah, well, we're going to be talking more about this and, and taking some of your calls later. Um, but, Dr Vogt, um, just finally to you very briefly, is there anything mm -hmm. that people like Michelle and I can do about this? Yes, um, so we do um, find that uh, people do get better uh, from treatment, and this treatment uh, centres around the use of cognitive behaviour therapy with perhaps some mindfulness-based principles. And we do see people at the Royal National ENT and Eastman Dental Hospitals for this condition. Um, and people can be referred to our service via their GP. And what we are looking at is not a cure, unfortunately. We are looking for um, an increased tolerance of those sounds. And really, okay. you've already mentioned a lot of it is based around the thoughts. Uh, thoughts such as that the person who's making those sounds is sort of irresponsible and that they should know better. And we are trying to, uh, one, help people take a different perspective uh, on this and also r reduce their, their attention to those sounds. Yeah. But it also involves taking in the people around uh, the people suffering from misophonia and getting a better understanding okay. for them to get a better Stop. understanding we've got, we've of got, the condition. Uh, a, a big you. reaction. We've got a lot of people to talk to. Michelle and Dr. Florian, thank you both thank you, very, very much indeed. Very enlightening, very informative. Listening to all of that.